Hello and welcome to Sunday service. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so excited. I am excited to be in the house of the Lord, even if it's online. Glory. <laughs> so let us begin. You know, we're going to start with a time of opening prayer where we're going to activate our spirits for victory. So let's just begin speaking in other tongues wherever you are. You know, you can speak in your understanding if you don't speak in tongues yet. Let's just speak in other tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, Karabase Shente, Man Tokufra, Legreste, Barro Tokovra, O Kashanta, Parre Tekivra, Le Kubaza Shaka, Barre Tekifra, Monta Kaleke Tekezuko, Bashaka Baba Baba Basoto, O Karre Tekivra, Le Kurabashanta, Le Grosta. So much to pray about. Oh, hallelujah. Bo shata kaba baba ba soto. Mata kaba ya. Pray for the nations of the world. Bale grosta pale grende kivra. Le grosta pale grose leigra. Monta kaba ye. Bo shata kaba ya. Mako ba ivra le grezende kivra. Pray for Ukraine and Russia. There is no war in the name of Jesus. Bale grosta pale greste. Bo sata kaba ye. There's peace in the name of Jesus. Mande geira ba shoga. Le grosta pale greste, bolsa takabaye. Oh, hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Glory to God! I trust you're charged up in the spirit, you know, in your spirit as well. So now you're ready to, to worship, you know, from your home, from your friend's house, from your kitchen, some of you from your bathroom. Praise God, you know, so we can praise the Lord now. It's so important to worship God. You know, God loves it. And then receive the word with meekness and gladness. So without further ado, let's go straight into the worship.
Shakira de los otros. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching us today. I'm very grateful to my highly esteemed Zonal Secretary, Pastor Wilson, for the opportunity to take the Rhapsody at today's service. Service, praise God. The Rhapsody today is titled, The Affirmation of His Lordship. And the theme scripture is John 1, from verse 12 to 13, which says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Praise the Lord. There are many today who, though have heard about Jesus and believed in him, have never consciously affirmed his lordship over their lives. Consequently, they are not saved. Praise God. Believing isn't enough. The Bible says even devils believe and tremble. James 2, 19, 20 says, Though thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Praise the Lord. There's many people out there that when we go out to evangelize, they'll tell us that they have heard of Jesus Christ. They'll even tell us that they attend church. But if they have not confessed Jesus as the Lord of their lives, they are not born again. They are not sons of God. Praise God. So pastor continues. There's a Bible way to receive salvation. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's it. It's affirmation of the Lordship of Jesus that catapults the sinner into salvation. Hallelujah. So it's with the mouth. Amen. So in your evangelical work, take the time to help those who are yet to understand this and explain it to them. Salvation is free and, has, and, and salvation is free and has been made possible and available to all men by Jesus Christ. But it only becomes a vital experience in the life of those who confess the Lordship of Jesus over their lives. Praise God. We are in reach out season. Hallelujah. So there will be many people that this will apply to. So we just have to explain to them that they receive salvation by, yes, believing in the heart that Jesus Christ is Lord of their lives. But they must say it. They must say it. Praise God. It brings to mind what John said in John 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah. You received Christ into your heart by the affirmation of faith. When you made that declaration, according to Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, Christ took up his abode in you. You became a new creation, a bona fide son or daughter of God. With his life, and nature in your spirit. No wonder he says in 1 John 3 verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Glory to God. What a beautiful rhapsody. He's really admonishing us that we must affirm the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if we are ev evangelizing to people, this is what will bring them into this life that we are in. You know, affirming the Lordship of Jesus Christ over their lives. Hallelujah. So now we're going to take our confession. Praise God. So kindly repeat after me. Jesus fulfilled the righteous demands of justice that consummated salvation for all mankind. Therefore, I pray for sinners around the world today that their hearts be open to the understanding of the gospel, to confess their faith in Jesus Christ, believing in their hearts that God raised him from the dead. 
and as they do, they are ushered into the new life in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I would like to once again thank my highly esteemed Zonal Secretary, Pastor Wilson, for the opportunity. Enjoy the rest of the service. The Healing Streams Live Healing Services with the Man of God, Pastor Chris, is God's answer to the cry of the sick and hurting all around the world. In March 2021, 63-year-old Mario Scandoval from Australia was preparing dinner and a pot containing 10 liters of hot water accidentally poured on his left leg. Traumatized and in terrible pain, he called the ambulance. He was immediately rushed to the hospital for treatment. The burns were so severe that the doctors recommended skin grafting procedure for his left leg. He could no longer walk unaided, hence he was given two crutches to aid his mobility. He was constantly in severe pain that became unbearable for him. It was in this state that Mario heard about the Healing Streams live healing services with the man of God, Pastor Chris. It was indeed a special time of healing and restoration as the man of God ministered to the global audience. You can put your hand over that place where you need a miracle. Put your hand over the pain, over the infirmity. And expect the power of God to surge through your being. Oh, bones kira avlek dila groske sastra digas sastra mando legreta sastra digas. Countless healings and miracles were recorded all around the world. Mario was miraculously healed while participating in the Healing Streams live healing services. Watch as he shares his inspiring testimony. I very grateful for being healed in one of the healing streams of Pastor Chris. And then uh, this is my testimony. At the end of February, beginning of March, about 6 p.m., I was cooking my dinner and I was cooking a steamed fish in a pot of about 10 liters of, of, of water, so boiling the water to, to uh, make the cook. So the fish was finished and then the, the water was absolutely boiling and accidentally fall onto my leg. Well, in that moment, the pain was terrible, unbearable. It's like, imagine somebody is peeling you off your skin, just like that. Because that's happened to me. That, so I was so uh, jumping, screaming. I called the ambulance and they came and said, before they come, they say, put your leg under the water until we came. So I did put in the cold water in the, in the uh, shower. So the leg was immediately made bubbles, bubbles everywhere, and also in another area, the skin totally peeled off. As I said before, like somebody peeled you off. That's all, that was it. So the ambulance came, they took me to the uh, Royal Brisbane Hospital here in Australia. And then uh, so they put me a lot of medications. <laughs> so the, before I go, I, they give me two letters. One letter to my family daughter, doctor, and the other letter, they say, this is to your doctor to make the request for the burn unit. And, and this the pictures on your phone has to be presented the day of the appointment for the skin craft. You will need a skin craft. And, and they give me, in the hospital, they gave me two crutches. Uh, I didn't know how to use crutches, you know, it's so difficult to walk on that. Lucky, I feel like I'm going down, you know, fall. So they say, don't forget, put your leg uh, in three pillows. So here we go, crutches then near the bed, three pillows like that. How I could I sleep like that? And then, uh, a couple of days later, uh, Pastor John says to me, uh, Brother Mario, we're going to have healing, uh, healing streams, okay? And then I was together, joined together in the healing stream by, by, by my mobile phone. And what I'm going to tell you 
it will be, it will blow your mind because that happened to me. Pastor Chris says, and now I'm going to pray for the people around the world. People around the world, place, place your hand wherever is your problem. You can put your hand, hand over that place and then, you need okay. a miracle. Okay. I place put your it hand over the pain, my left, over the infirmity. My left leg, where that was the problem. That was totally destroyed. I've got pictures in everything. And then I and then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. And then I say, okay, okay. And I was expecting he say more. Okay, because this is my first, my first healing strength. And then, okay. And then that was what he say. And then 30 seconds later, he, he say, and now, a few minutes later, he say, I want you to check where the Lord healed you, if you've been healed. And then, this the moment where really I'm very grateful that I wait. So I went to get the scissors, and then I start to cut the first bandage. Tuk, tuk, tuk. But before I cut it, I close my eyes. <laughs> and then when I open my eyes, wow, that was dry. Like nothing happened. And then I was, and then I stopped crying. That was happy, some kind of joy. Immediately the joy like the way how I feel when I was shipping. This joy is is you cannot copy. You can to feel it. And then I uh, I cut the second bandage and then <sighs> oh my god. Especially the second bandage was a big problem there. Heal. I went the last one, heal. So no more pain, I stand up. Start to check it up and then no need the crashes. I, I forgot about the crashes. Usually I couldn't even move one step without the crashes. Immediately, totally healed. So that happened on the on the uh, Saturday, I see in Africa and Australia is Sunday in the morning. So my daughter says to me before it's not Friday, you have to come on Sunday. I want to make a special appointment for you. I want to see you because I got to give you a letter to take you, for you to go to the Royal Brisbane Hospital to the burn unit where it is waiting for you, the specialist, to do the skin craft. The, this was on Friday before the Lord healed me. And then uh, I said, okay. So I went on Sunday, after I was already heal, healed, I didn't need crashes. Everything was dry up. I went like that to his uh, clinic, and then he said, <coughs> what happened to you? I told him what happened. About, I just been healed by a prayer. Of Pastor Chris, the Lord healed me. And then he says, I you know what, do you know I'm a Christian? I say, no, I didn't know. When I was a Christian, I was 20 years Christian. I never saw a miracle, never. And I say to him, mi vida. <laughs> and then he was smiling, he said, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, I, see, I saw a miracle now. And the thing is, he believed it, because he's my doctor for the last many, many years, okay? And then, uh, then he say, you see this? Yeah. These letters, you don't need it. You don't even need me. You heal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This testimony in my heart, I believe, is not mine. It is belong to the Lord. I just witness His power. And I want to say thank you. Uh, to Pastor Chris for the healing streams and also to, to all the healing stream partners around the world. More than anything else, thank you to the Lord. Amen.
Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time we've had in service so far, you know, and I'm sure that you've been so blessed. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching from. It's a beautiful day here in London, England, and we're reaching you, you know, all over the world. And it's so beautiful to have you here with us in service today. It is now time for the message, a beautiful time for us to be inspired, a beautiful time for us to you know, receive words from God that will transform our lives, that will bring illumination, that will bring empowerment, that will bring grace, really, and the empowerment of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So there's a time where you can reach out to your friends, reach out to your family members, reach out to everybody that you know. Let them know that service is live and that, you know, we are bringing the Word of God today, you know, to you. So, you know, just go ahead, send the link to as many people as you no, you know, would require the link to service today, you know, and even reach out to your friends and your family and just let them know that service is on. Glory to God. Before we go, you know, into the message, I would like for us to pray. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this beautiful opportunity that we have today to hear your word. Lord, we thank you, God, because we know your word brings illumination, your word brings empowerment, your word brings transformation, Lord. Our hearts are open to receive and our minds are alert, yes, to get everything, oh God, that you have planned for us today in the name of Jesus. Lord, yes, truly, your engrafted word is coming into our hearts with meekness, Lord, and we're taking it in, Lord, and we're running with it by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Before I proceed any further, you know, I'd like to say a very big thank you to our wonderful and our highly esteemed Zona Secretary, esteemed Pastor Wilson. Thank you so much, sir, for this beautiful opportunity to be able to minister God's word to his children today. Glory to God. It is a glory. Hallelujah. You know, we are around the corner from the Healing Streams Live Healing Service with our dear man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome, you know, and it is just a wonderful time, you know, of the miraculous, you know, the clouds you know of healing the clouds of health the clouds of divine health really are gathering and are ready for an outpour glory, glory to god and it's just a wonder that we have this beautiful opportunity to be here today you know to get ourselves ready for the healing healing streams life healing services glory to god and to hear god's word concerning healing concerning her health and concerning you know everything that you know, the Spirit of God wants for us to, you know, in this time, glory to God, because it is, you know, really our road to the healing streams, live healing services, glory to God. You know, um, an interesting thing, you know, to note or to realize, first of all, is that God actually wants you well. Glory to God. God wants you well. It is important that, you know, as an individual, you must know that, glory to God, he didn't come to the earth and, you know, demonstrated all that, you know, we see in the Bible, you know, to give us a life that was substandard or a life that was, you know, a, a, a servant to sickness or a life that was, you know, permeable to diseases, glory to God. But he came, glory to God, that we may really have life and have that life to the full, glory to God. Uh, the Bible shows us that there are three kinds of sin. You know, there's the imputed sin, there's inherited sin, and there's also like the personal sin, glory to God. But, you know, um, it then shows us how, you know, um, Adam's original sin, you know, every man, you know, with the old nature sort of inherited, glory to God. But it shows us something that really we have a new nature, glory to God. If you are in Christ, you're a new creature. And so you are no longer the one that is bound by sin and so bound by, you know, the characteristics or the evidences or the fruits that will come out of sin and out of unrighteousness. The Bible says something so clear. It says in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. It says, And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Glory to God. So you see that the sin of Adam you know, was passed on to all men. Glory to God. But uh, 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 um, it then you know, shows us, you know, as we further see in the scriptures, that truly there is a redemption. Truly there is a remedy. Truly there is something that you know, is different from, you know, the life that this Adam brought and he, you know, the air of, you know, the transgression brought. And, you know, we have a new life in Christ, glory to God, and we don't longer have to live, you know, in death anymore. You see, death is not, not long, is, is not really just the cessation, you know, of uh, uh, a person breathing, you know, and you say, okay, yeah, that person is no longer breathing, their vital organs are no longer active, and so you can say they are dead. But really, you know, when you look at the scripture, you see where the Bible talks about death, it is literally talking about, you know, the expulsion of the presence of God in a space, the expulsion of the presence of God in a person, you see, and he's also talking about the corruption, you see, of a person's nature. That is what the Bible talks to us about this. And it shows us in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, it says the sin of Adam really was passed on to all men. And so 
even with that sin, death came as well. But it talks to us, you know, about the last Adam, glory to God, and tells us that there is a last Adam who is a life-giving spirit, hallelujah. And so we don't longer live in death. We don't longer live, you know, under the bound, uh, bound of sin or the bondage of sin and, you know, its fruits. But we now live this new life in Christ, glory to God. So, you know, first of all, you need to understand that sickness is not from God because when you understand that, you can then begin to relate, you know, with the relationship that you have with this new life that you have in Christ. And, or if you're not born again, you know, we'll have an opportunity for you to receive Christ, you know. But you can really enjoy a different life even from right now, glory to God. Satan's you know, plan is to corrupt every man's world, really, and to corrupt the nature of every man. And so, you know, he's the originator of sicknesses, he's the originator, you know, of illnesses of disease, glory to God. But, you know, we have a greater life inside of us. We have something that is different, glory to God. And that is the life that we live from the inside out, hallelujah. The Bible shows us in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, you see, we read it very quickly. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. It says, for God was with him. Hallelujah. God was with him. Remember I told you, I said, God wants you well. If truly, you know, it was a plan that God, you know, was the originator of illnesses, why would he, you know, anoint Jesus Christ, you know, with the Holy Spirit and with, and with power? And then, you know, Jesus Christ would go on to do good everywhere, you know, and to heal all our oppressed of the devil. Glory to God. So you can see that he's not consistent with his nature. Glory to God. Because if it originates from him, he wouldn't put in so much energy, he wouldn't put in, you know, the work to actually get people out of sickness and get them healed. Glory to God. So it shows, it shows us so, so, uh, uh, um, so interesting in that God is not the originator, you know, of sin and, and the originator of sick, sicknesses. Glory to God. Jesus Christ said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. So you already know it's not consistent. If Jesus is on the move, he's on the way, he's on the go, you know, healing people, it is not consistent with the nature of the Father to then be the one giving and imputing sickness unto man. Glory to God. But, you know, God actually dealt with the sin problem. And so he dealt with the sickness problem. The Bible shows us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. We'll just read it very quickly. It says, Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God. He has dealt with the sin problem and now he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us from the power of sickness, from the power of you know, sin, from the power of unrighteousness and has delivered us into you know, the kingdom of his dear son. Glory to God. So this is where we live now in the kingdom of God. So what does this translation mean for you? Glory to God. What does this translation mean for you? What does it bring to you? Glory to God. What is the good news with regards to your health? What is the good news with regards to, you know, the situations that you're facing in your body even right now? Glory to God. There is a solution for you. Glory to God. And the word of God shows us and we'll look at it, you know, uh, uh, in the Bible, you see, how Christ has made us, you know, a different and a unique breed. He has made us very peculiar, glory to God. Jesus Christ says he is the vine and you are the branches. And that same life that is in the vine is in the branches, glory to God. So if that life that is in the vine is in the branches, you should know that truly the life that Jesus lived on the earth is the same life that you are meant to live. It doesn't record anywhere in the Bible that Jesus was struggling with illness, or he was struggling with disease, you see, and, you know, he had no no dominion over it. He tells us how he healed so many people, glory to God. But at one point, he took on the sicknesses of the world. He took on the sin of the world. He took on all those things, you know. But, you know, he was victorious over, over it all, glory to God. And we now are able to live the victorious life in Christ, glory to God. Let's quickly look at the Bible, hallelujah. You see, some people may be thinking, you know, uh, well, all of these things I've heard before, you see, but how come I'm still unwell? How come, you know, I'm still, you know, living a life, you know, that is bound by, you know, disease and, you know, I'm in a really difficult situation. The Bible shows us something so key. It says, you know, my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Have you really understood what the new life that Christ has brought for you really means and really entails, what it really brings to you, glory to God? It is the gospel. So what is the gospel with regards to your particular situation? And interestingly, you can have healing in more than just your body. You can have healing healing, you know, in your mind, you can have healing, you know, in several different things with maybe your academics, your finances, you know, your relationships with people. You see, Satan, you know, is out trying to corrupt these things, glory to God. But the word of God shows us that we can live a different life, glory to God. You know, and we have been made associates of the God kind, glory to God. If truly you are an associate of the God kind, it means that you have the indestructible life of God inside of you. Remember I told you, Jesus Christ said, I am the vine and you are the branches. It means that the same life that is in the vine is in 
inside of you. Glory to God. And so you have the indestructible life of God inside of you. So you are born, you see, with a new life. You are born with the life of God inside of you. And that life is beyond and it's so far, you know, far above sickness and disease. Glory to God. So you are, the, the desire of God is for you to really walk in divine health every day. Glory to God. And that's the reason why, you know, the healing streams, life healing services is coming up. Glory to God. Because, you know, the word of God is coming to you now. You're building up your faith. You're building up anticipation. You're building up, you know, uh, uh, courage inside of you and boldness, ready to take the word. You know, there's, 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 there's really, really, really remarkable, you know, uh, scriptures that we'll be looking at today. You know, um, and you really see how God desires for you to be well. Glory to God. I'm alive with the life of God. I say this to myself, you know, every time I'm alive with the life of God. You see, my life is impermeable to sickness and impermeable to disease. Glory to God. Because God has won, you know, the authority over Satan. You know, Christ has, you know, defeated Satan. And I was in him, you know, when that, you know, defeat was happening. And so I'm victorious over Satan. I'm victorious over any sting, you know, that he may have. I'm victorious over, you know, anything that he could bring that is related to darkness, to sin, to unrighteousness. Glory to God. Everything that I do is consistent and everything that I live is consistent to the life that God has brought for me. So every day I'm assured of my rights and my privileges in Christ and I'm running with this glory to God because truly it is the life that God has brought for us to live. Glory to God. It says, you know, the Bible tells us that we have the eternal life of God now. It says we have the eternal life of God. Glory to God. And that life is the way, the God kind of life. There's the plant life, there's the animal life, there's the normal human life, and then there's the God kind of life, hallelujah. And I am one with God, and so I have his life inside of me. The Bible tells us he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And, you know, the spirit inside of me gives life to my body. It's what he talks about in the Bible, and we'll see his glory to God. So I really have God's ability inside of me because I have God's nature inside of me because I have that same spirit, that great and mighty spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, living inside of me, hallelujah. And so as the words are coming to you today, you know, Grab a hold of it. Refuse to, you know, let your mind tell you, you know, about your experiences and remind you that, oh, but there's actually pain in your body right now. No, refuse, you know, to uh, uh, acknowledge the pain. Refuse to acknowledge, you know, the lying vanities, but truly believe that the word of God, you know, is true. And what the word of God says is, is. What the word of God says will be, will be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in uh, Psalm 107 verse 20, he says he sent his word and he healed them. Glory to God. He says he sent his word and healed them. Hallelujah. The word of God, you know, is that thing that brings the healing. Because first of all, you realize that when you, when you study the word of God, you study the logos, you realize what he actually tells you about you. You know your true nature, that this is what I am meant to be. And so you begin to animate, glory to God, based on what the word of God says. You begin to live that, you know, reality based on what the word of God says. But you are forgetting what seems to be the carnal because you are no longer dwelling on the carnal. Now you are living and living based of the life that the Son of God has brought for you, glory to God. So, you know, we are uh, rejoicing, we are excited every day, you know, based on this, glory to God. And, you know, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, you see, and in verse, it says, for us not to be conformed to this world, glory to God. It says, be, for us to be renewed, glory to God. And how, do you, how, do, how is your mind renewed? By the word of God, you see. So don't think about the experiences. Don't think about what you faced, you know, for 10 long years. The Bible tells us so many people's experiences in the Bible, you see, and how Jesus Christ met them and changed their stories. They had been, you know, struggling for so long, for so long, for many years they had been struggling. But that one encounter with Jesus changed their lives forever. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, we look at it very quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. It says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, after, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hallelujah. It says, And put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness. Remember what the Bible shows us, and we looked at it earlier on, you see, in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, about how, you know, sin, you know, came into this world. And so death came into this world through one Adam, you see. But now it's telling you here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, it's saying, you know, be renewed in the spirit of your minds, you see. And then it says, put on the new man. Glory to God. Put on the new man. Because the new man really, for many people, right, is already their legal reality. 
but it's not their vital reality yet. It then tells you, it says, put on the new man because it's almost as though you are living a life that is different from the life that God has called you to live. That's why he's telling you, reminding you to put on the new man because you are living something else that is different from what God has brought for you. It says, put on the new man. It says, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Glory to God. So if it is created in righteousness and true holiness, it is no longer subject to the transgressions. I'm no longer a, an heir of transgression from the sin of Adam. Glory to God. Because now I am created in righteousness and so sickness has no dominion over my life and so pain has no dominion over my life so the, the, the negative circumstances of life have nothing to do with me glory to God again in Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 it says and I put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him glory to God after the image of him that created him that's why I say go to the word glory to God because the word of God tells you who you truly are and what you know, this life that you've, you know, been brought into means for you, glory to God. So the renewing of your mind really comes from the meditation of the word. And so, you know, as you study the word of God, right, you could have been, you know, facing a particular challenge, right? What you require really is the word. Go and look what the word of God, you know, talks about that particular situation, what the word of God talks about that particular thing, and then renew your mind. Decide that, you know, you will change the way you have looked at things before. You will change the way, you know, you have seen things before, and then animate based on what the word of God talks to you about. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift, you know, is from God. So sickness is not from God, and you don't need to live in that realm because you cannot have what is not of God and say that you are of God. You see, you, if you are truly of God, then you put away anything that is not of God. Refuse the pain, refuse the sicknesses, refuse the diseases, and say that truly I am living a new life. It doesn't matter if you know, you, you've been speaking it for so long and your experiences are different. You will insist on it now, glory to God. This is the time to insist on it, glory to God. It is the time to insist on it. You know, the Bible gives us an account you know, in Luke chapter 5, verse 5, about how you know, Jesus Christ, you know, uh, uh, in, rather in Luke chapter 5, and you know, what I'll talk about really is from verse 5, Jesus Christ you know, meets Peter. You know, um, on the boat after, you know, uh, uh, he's taught for, you know, he's taught all night and he had caught no fish. You see, and then the master speaks to him. And something very interesting in verse 5, he says, Master, at thy word. Because the master has now told him, say, cast your net into the water. And he's thinking, oh, but I have tried all night. And normally the fish will come out in the night, not in the daytime. You see, but at the word of Jesus Christ, he said, Master, at thy word. And he put his net into the water. And you know the story. You see, he had so much that his net began to break. At the word of God, what can you change? Glory to God. So what is the word of God talking to you about your situation? What is the word of God talking to you about that thing that you need a healing in your life right now? You see, God wants you well. Hallelujah. Let's quickly look at the Bible in Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. It says, when Jesus came down from the mountainside, his large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you see, I found this so touching. He said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hallelujah. He knew that he could be cleansed by the, by the words and by the master. If you are willing. Jesus Christ even tells us, he says, you are claimed to my words. Interesting. In verse 3, he says, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. He says, I am willing, he said. What a wonder the master is. He says, I am willing. He said, because remember he asked in verse 2, he said, Lord, if you are willing. But then Jesus responds and says, yes, I truly am willing. He said, he says, be clean. Hallelujah. He says, immediately he was cleansed of the leprosy. Hallelujah. The Lord is willing to change your situation right now. God is willing to make a testimony out of your life. God is willing to give you a new life. God is willing to, you know, improve the way you have been living. Glory to God. And remember, he says, I am willing. Says, and he gave the word, says, be clean. And immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Interesting. Two things to really note here. He says, I am willing. So God is willing to really change your situation. And something so key, even, you know, for us that are taking healing to the nations, glory to God. You know, uh, in, 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 in the, in, when we look at Bible history and we study, you know, about, you know, lepers, you see they would normally, you know, be put out of the town, you know, and they would not be allowed to have any engagement with other people. Really, if they attempted it, they could be killed, you see. But the man that was, you know, a, 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 a leprous man, you know, he ran up to Jesus, right? He knew that he could possibly have been, you know, stoned to death, you know, or be put to death if, you know, he had been interacting with, you know, a clean person. But he recognized something, glory to God. He recognized something that his salvation, his, you know, his being made whole, his, you know, being made clean 
was in the one that had the life. Glory to God. Jesus Christ says he's the life. He was in the one that had the life. Glory to God. And truly, as we're taking healing to the nations now, we are the ones as well on the scene that have the life. Glory to God. So there may be people that are coming up to us. You see, it is not for you to run away. It's for you to be bold. Glory to God. Because the Bible tells us, you know, and gives us a mandate and a commission to go into the world, preach the gospel, to go into the, our world and heal the sick, to go into our world and raise the dead. Glory to God. So you are going with boldness because you know you have this life inside of you. Jesus didn't run and say, oh no, that's a leprous man. He's not meant to be anywhere near me because, you know, he was scared of, you know, uh, uh, getting leprosy himself or saying, oh, you should be in isolation. No. But we are taking healing and we're taking to the world just because we have the same life that Jesus has in, had in him instead of us. We're taking that thing now. And we're not, you know, going to say, oh, yeah, these are the people that are going to be isolated and we, you know, don't look after them and we don't love them. No, we're taking the healing power of God to those people as well because the, the gospel is for every man. Glory to God. Whether they're infected, you know, with any virus or not, we're taking the gospel to them. Glory to God. Because God has given us a magic and a charge as well to take healing to the nations. Hallelujah. So man's knowledge of, you know, isolation remains you know, man's knowledge and it's just sense knowledge, glory to God. Because the Bible tells us that, you know, Jesus Christ had a different knowledge. He knew he had life inside of him and that life could not be corrupted by sin. It could not be corrupted by sickness. It could not be corrupted by unrighteousness, glory to God. And so he knew that if he would speak the word, he, the, the leprous man would get his healing, glory to God. The Bible gives us another account. You see, in, uh, interestingly, actually, in uh, 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 Luke chapter 8, when you look at verse 41, you know, through to Luke chapter 9, um, so you finish Luke chapter 8 from verse 41 all through to uh, verse 56, you know, and then you look from Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. The Bible shows us, you know, a very beautiful account, two actually, uh, of, you know, healing and the love of the master. First of all, starts with, you know, um, a man, Jairus, you know, whose daughter was unwell and at the point of death, you know, and whilst Jesus was in, you know, in a crowd, you know, he was, you know, um, uh, uh, in the crowd and people thronged at him. In that same crowd where this man, you know, is coming to Jesus with a desire for, you know, his daughter to be, you know, made whole and to be healed so she doesn't die. A woman that had had an issue of blood for 12 long years, right, is also coming with a desire, you see, for something, to receive something from the master. The Bible tells us how, you know, uh, there's healing in his wing, glory to God. She's coming and, you know, she goes after the, you know, the fringes of the robe, you know, um, of, of Jesus. And she touches, you know, the borders of, 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 of his robe. She touches the fringes. And instantly, you see, the issue that she had had, the Bible interestingly tells us that, you know, she had been with the physicians for so long. She, she literally had given all of her money to the physicians. But yet, there was no hope for her. You see, there was no hope. So what is that situation that you are going through right now in your life that it seems to be hopeless? The word of God is presented to you today. Can you only believe? Glory to God. If you can believe, and believing costs nothing, can you truly believe? Just like that woman, she believed that if she would only but touch the hem of his garment, glory to God, if she would only but touch, you know, something that was connected to him, she would only but touch, you know, uh, 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 the hem of the word, the hem of life. Because she recognized that this is not just an ordinary person. This was literally life that was walking. Glory to God. Life that was walking. John says we beheld this life. Glory to God. We beheld this life. Hallelujah. The word of God is life. Hallelujah. So what is that situation that you want to change even right now? There is grace. The healing streams, you know, is, is coming up very, very soon. There is grace for you. Hallelujah. If you would believe. Glory to God. If you would only believe. Hallelujah. So you can look at it, you know, you can quickly just look at it from Luke chapter 8, Luke uh, uh, verse 41 to uh, uh, um, 56, you know, and interestingly, maybe I'll just read uh, from uh, Luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 2. So you can look at the story of Jairus and, you know, uh, I mentioned about the man Jairus. The Bible actually shows us how, you know, the, the loving master brought this dead girl because by the time he was going out to, you know, the man's house, the girl had died. He says he brought her back to life. She she was not, she was really not dead. He brought her back to life. Glory to God. So it is really uh, a testimony that when the life is present, truly there is life. That's why I always say I'm alive with the life of God because she couldn't, she she didn't have the ability to die when life was present with her. Glory to God. She couldn't, she didn't have the ability to die, and that's why God, He, Jesus understood that she was not dead. Glory to God. Because the life was present. Glory to God. This life that John says, this, we beheld this life. Glory to God. He understood something. Glory to God. Luke chapter 9, 
verse 1 to 2. It says, then he called his 12 disciples. This is how, after he had, you know, brought this girl back to life. He says, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. Glory to God. He says, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Glory to God. He brought his 12 disciples together and gave them the power and authority over all devils and to cure all diseases. Glory to God. Uh, I am one of those. Glory to God that has received the power and authority over all devils and over all demons. Glory to God. I'm not scared of it. And I have the ability inside of me to cure all diseases. Glory to God. Because I have the mandate from God. Because I have the same life that is in, in, in the master. Glory to God. And I'll be sent to also preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Glory to God. And that's the reason why I'm speaking to you even right now today about the Healing Streams Live Healing Services. Glory to God. And I'm leading you to a path where, you know, you can enjoy divine health as well because it is not you know, God's plan for you to be sick today and then well tomorrow and sick today again and well tomorrow. His plan is for you to actually live in totality of divine health and in fullness of health always. Glory to God. No down days, no down times, but perpetually living in health, persistently living in the victory of you know, health that Christ has presented to us. Glory to God. So, you know, we'll see you know, from several parts of the Bible how Jesus Christ healed so many people in Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. It says, and when and and when he when evening had come, says they brought to him many who were demon possessed. He says, and he cast out the cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. So many times, you know, the, when the Bible shows us about you know Jesus Christ performing his miracles and healing people, it brings to our attention something so key, right? Because he almost always demonstrates how many of these people were influenced and possessed by demons, right? Or oppressed by demons. And so they were then sick and oppressed of the devil. So what Jesus will do, he will normally will cast out those demons, glory to God, and then restore them to health, glory to God. You see, so he tells us that sickness is spiritual, really. It's not just about, okay, um, I've slept, you know, in a particular way, you know, and I now feel, you know, a pain in that part of my body. You see, my dear brother and my dear sister, you have to be careful that that pain in that one part doesn't then spread to other parts. I, I remember I said it is spiritual. Life is spiritual, you see. So from the, from the smallest, you know, upsets, you must tackle it with the word. Glory to God. You must tackle it with the word and you are consistent in your communication of the word. Glory to God. There is no going back. You are insisting that the word of God must prevail over your body. Glory to God. Over your body, you will insist that this thing has to go. It doesn't matter how little it is. It could just be a slight headache, you know, every other two or three days. My dear beloved, you must tackle it from that slight headache before it goes, you know, into a migraine that can cause, you know, more issues for you. You see, and then progresses into other things. No, but from that slight Corruption, you must insist that no, this is not going to happen in my body. I will not allow this, you know, this corruption to take place in my body. You correct it with your words, glory to God. Because he says at many times he spoke the word, glory to God. Even where we just read from, he says he cast out the spirits with a word, hallelujah. So you begin to speak, you begin to declare, hallelujah. You begin to insist on your healing and insist on your health, glory to God. And this desire that, you know, Nothing that is not of God will have a place in your body. Glory to God. Let's quickly look at uh, uh, um, uh, a few scriptures that show us, you know, about healing, that talk to us about healing. You know, um, first of all, we'll look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 9. It says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have, ye have received, freely give. Glory to God. And then in Luke chapter 9, verse 2. He says, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. This is the desire of God. This is God's desire to heal the nations. Glory to God. In Luke chapter 10 verse 9, he says, and heal the sick that are there. And I say unto them, the kingdom of God is nigh unto you. Glory to God. What then must you do? You know, we'll look at this uh, scripture as we begin to wrap up. What then must you do? Bible shows us, he says, and if Christ be in you, this is Romans chapter 8 verse 10. It says, and if Christ be in you, it says, the body is dead because of sin. It says, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Glory to God. And it says, li listen to this now in verse 11. It shows us something so key. It says, and if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ up from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. 
It also makes it so interesting when you look at, you know, verse 11. It shows us the triune, you know, God really here. You can see the Spirit. You can see the Father. You can see, you know, the Son. Because, I mean, let's look at it again. It says, if the Spirit, so you can see the Spirit, of Him. Who is the Him? The Father. That raised up Jesus, the Son, from the dead, dwells inside of you. If God dwells inside of you. If the totality of divinity dwells inside of you, inside of your spirit, he says, he will, he, he says, if he that raised Christ up from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, glory to God, by his spirit that dwelleth inside of you, glory to God. Do not think that, you know, this is talking about the body, you know, that is um, uh, incorruptible. So where we, when we rapture, you know, he's talking about this mortal body, this current body that, you know, you have right now. You see, he's talking about this body because it, it, when, you know, uh, we put on the incorruptible, it's not a mortal body, you see. But this physical body, he says, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you, he will quicken, he will vitalize your mortal body. He will give life to this body. Glory to God. Remember I said, you know, the problem of sickness, you know, originated from the original sin. And he says something so key, you know, in verse 10. He says, uh, and if Christ be in you, he says, the body is dead because of sin, Remember, the original, you know, nature, the original ordinary body is dead because of sin. Because every man that comes into this world, you know, comes in if uh, you are not, you must, as long as you haven't received Christ, you are, you know, an heir of the transgression. And so that inherited sin is there. He says, but if, the, he says, the body is dead because of sin. He says, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Remember, once you now have this righteousness inside of you, you have Christ inside of you, you have the spirit of God inside of you, that spirit, that righteousness then vitalizes your body. And so you do no longer live under the bondage of the original sin and the, and the, the, the things that come with that you know, original sin and the characteristics of that sin. You now have a different kind of life, glory to God. Bible tells us in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to the one that is in Christ. No condemnation in your body, no condemnation in your mind, no condemnation in your spirit. Glory to God. So you must live from the spirit out. Glory to God. In verse 6, something so interesting that he talks about. He says, for to be carnally minded is death. He says, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Glory to God. So when you feel, you know, that symptom, you see, so many people, they, I mean, generally don't even want to search up the symptoms on Google because once you do that, you know, Google tells you sometimes that you just have one terrible thing, you know, so some people are even afraid, they don't even want to check it, but then they diagnose themselves with certain things. You see, they know that, okay, once my nose is running and I feel a slight headache, it means that I have a flu. And then they give themselves, you know, uh, the diagnosis already. And from then on, they live in the, re they start to animate that that is truly what they have and that becomes their reality. The Bible tells us, it says to be carnally minded is death. It doesn't matter what your body is saying. Remember that it says, if the spirit is inside of you, it will vitalize this your body. So you live from the spirit out. It doesn't matter what the body is saying. It doesn't matter what the carnal symptoms are saying. It doesn't matter what the flesh is talking about. You superimpose the Spirit of God upon that situation and decide that, no, I will not live, you know, the way that my flesh is talking about, but I will animate based on what the Word of God says, based on what the Word of God talks to me about. Glory to God. It tells us how we are no longer in bondage of sin, how the Spirit of God living inside of us will produce that life that our body requires. And so with that life, you are now impermeable to sickness, to sin, to disease, you know, to illnesses, to anything, doesn't matter what the doctors have named it, glory to God. So this is what you look at and you begin to animate, glory to God. You begin to animate and then you start to use words. Start to use the, the words, you see. The Bible in Proverbs chapter 4, when you look at verse 20 to 22, you know, it's, it's so key, it's telling you, incline your ears to these words, incline your ears to my sayings. Then he says the words, this is what I'm speaking to you, is health to your flesh. When you look at the Hebrew word, it's marpe. It's literally medicine to your flesh. The word of God is the, is, is the medicine that you really require to change anything that, you, you, that needs to change in, in your physical body. Glory to God. In your physical body. So you are listening you know, to the word. You are grabbing the word voraciously. And even as we're you know, in the service right now, there is a grace for healing and there is a grace for divine health. Even right now, glory to God. And so you can begin to animate and begin to speak the words. Glory to God. Begin to speak the words. A trouble that, you know, a lot of people have is when, you know, they speak uh, 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 a certain thing on one side and then they speak something else contrary on another side. It's not the best. Really not the best. You see, the Bible tells us in James chapter 3, verse 11, it says, can fresh water, you know, and salty water come out from the same place? If you really look at James chapter 3, it's, it's talking to us about, you know, 
a tool, a, a, an object so small, but yet can control so much. And he's talking about the tongue. What actually happens with your tongue? He says how a massive shape, right? You know, just a small thing can change the entire direction of that massive shape. You see, many of us know the London buses, the double-decker buses, you see. As massive as the bus is, the steering wheel that turns it around is just, you know, quite a small object. And it moves the entire thing, changes the direction of the entire thing. It's the same way it tells us about our tongue, how our tongue can change the direction and the trajectory of your life. You see, so you begin to realize that I can no longer confess those things that I confessed before that were contrary to the word of God, even as jokes. You see, even as jokes, young people, you know, many times you make jokes and you see you, people say, oh, I'm dead. And then they're just laughing. No, you're not dead. You're alive with the life of God. You're not dead. Because you begin to say these things and you are speaking. Pastor tells us, you know, our man of God, our dear man of God tells us how, you know, the word of God, right? Really words, you know, are, you know, are, are things, right? And the only way they change is with other words. So the words that are, you know, you've spoken into your world, you have to begin to change the things that you can see around you with your words. Start to now speak new words and decide that you have healing and you have health. Glory to God. Decide that you have healing and you have health. So speak. 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 Remember the man, you know, uh, in the pool, you see, that, you know, um, uh, uh, had been there for so many years, right? And he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus Christ spoke to him. He says, rise up, take your, be your bed and walk. You see, go. He just gave him the word. And he took his things and went. He didn't start to argue. He said, oh, what about my old life? What about, you know, the fact that, oh, my leg hasn't worked for so long? No, he, he just took the words and he ran with it. Glory to God. Remember, to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally, don't, don't live in the flesh realm, in the carnal realm. Live the realities of God's word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I trust that you have been blessed, you know, in today's service so far. Glory to God. You know, um, but before we go, you know, I'd just like to give any one of us the opportunity right now, you know, if you're not yet born again, you don't even have an understanding of this life that we're talking about. Glory to God. You don't know, you know, the benefits of this life because you don't even know what the life is, you see. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 about how there is no other name given amongst men whereby we must be saved, you see. It tells us, it says this is the appointed day and the appointed time of salvation. And the fact that you are in hearing me speak today means that God has a plan for you. God wants you to live in perfect health also. God wants you to live in the uniqueness of, you know, his words. Glory to God. I would just like to give you an opportunity, if you haven't yet done so, glory to God, to receive salvation even right now. Hallelujah. So you can just bow your heads. You can put one hand in on your chest, you know, and just repeat these words after me. Oh, Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and that God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today and with my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. From this day, I have eternal life. I am now born again. I am a child of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'd like to say congratulations to you if you said that prayer today and to welcome you into the brotherhood of, you know, of the saints. Glory to God. Welcome to Christ. Hallelujah. And, you know, just to remind us, you know, that it is the Healing Streams Live Healing Service with our dear man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyakilome, in just a few days, glory to God, in just a few days, the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th of March, glory to God. And so you can participate and be blessed, glory to God. It's just a wonder to have the opportunity, you know, to participate in the healing streams. The Bible shows us how, you know, everywhere that the streams will flow, life would come out of it. Glory to God. And so we're excited and we're ready for the healing streams, live healing services with our dear man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Yakilome. Hallelujah. I'd like to say a very big thank you to you for listening to me today. Glory to God. And thank you for uh, the wonderful opportunity to come into your homes, your offices, your cars, to talk to you about Jesus. And I want to also implore you to let other people know about Jesus and let other people know, you know, about this life in Christ. Glory to God. Before I go, I also like to say 
very big thank you to my highly esteemed Zonal Secretary, esteemed Pastor Wilson, sir. Thank you so much for this beautiful opportunity to minister God's words to his people. Thank you, sir. And to all of you, God bless you. I love you. Wow, hallelujah. Thank God for the word that you just received, for the rema that you received. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Manta cavra le grosta pale grande, le grosta pale grista pale grosta. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Shala grande pale grosta, le corra basce le grista fale grande. Monta cabarede. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I bless everyone who received that word, that they may produce fruits in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. So now it's time for us to honor the Lord with our finances or with anything else material. You know, we come to the house of the Lord with an offering. We pay our tithes, our first fruits, so important. So now is the time to do that. We'll we welcome the choir to minister a special number in the meantime as we gather our bank details and transfer and everything. In the meantime, get ready as we give to the Lord. Somebody shout glory.
Glory to God. Wow, 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 wow. So now it is time to pray over the offerings and givings. 
Just speak in other tongues for a minute. Man toku la grishta. Vada, thank you. Lo karida kivra le grosh and divra le grosta. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you that we are able to bless you. That we are able to bless your name. That we are able to honor you, Lord. Extol your name with our givings. Hallelujah. I pray now that every single person who has given, Lord, in your name, yes, their, their givings are sanctified by your Spirit in the name of Jesus. They're made holy unto you, Lord. I thank you that you have recognized their giving and their offering, Lord. You have recognized it. Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that yes, they are expecting a harvest. The time is reduced to a minimum for them to receive their harvest. For every giving, every giving comes with a harvest. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Man teki frale grushta, that the devourer is rebuked for their sake. Hallelujah, man te kivra le grushta. Wow, 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 wow. Somebody shout glory! Woo! Hallelujah, glory. So now I want to welcome very, very special individuals. You know, those of us, those of you who are worshiping with us for the very first time, you're welcome to BLW UK Zone A. I welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also in the name of our president, Reverend Dr. Chris Oyekilame, DSCDD, welcome. You are loved. We want to get in contact with you. Please, the details are up on the screen for you. Get in touch with us. Get in contact with us. We want you to get connected and physically meet you. Also, um, if you're new in Christ, send you some ministry materials. Please, let's get in contact. Glory to God. Thank you for tuning in. And now on to the next announcements. Some very exciting ministry programs coming up and the details will be up on the screen for you now. The street. It's filling streets. God's spirit is pouring out blessings all over the world. The Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris is here again. It is the biggest and most impactful healing service ever. The clouds are gathering, and there will be an outpouring of the miraculous all over the world from March 18th to the 20th, 2022. When we tell that devil to get out, it'll get out in the name of Jesus. And there will be restoration. You'll be healed. If you could not walk, you'd be able to get up and walk. When that moment comes, and I tell you to put your hands where you need a miracle, Get ready, because you must recover in the name of Jesus. Get ready to receive your own miracle. Doesn't matter what sickness, doesn't matter what infirmity, by the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, you will be healed. It's done unto you. Give God praise. You are healed for your own baby. Could not walk, see, or talk for over three months. And what's now, happened now? She can walk, she can, she walk, can talk, she can she talk, can talk and she can see. Well, shout hallelujah! Register now to participate at www.healingstreams.tv slash three days. For more details, please call plus one eight three two seven two four nine three nine zero or plus four four two zero three one seven six nine seven two four or plus two seven seven nine nine six seven five eight five two or plus two three four one eight 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 five zero six six the services will be broadcast live on www.healingstreams.tv and on the healing school mobile app and translations are available in many languages the healing streams live healing services with pastor chris your set time for your healing
Hallelujah. Lots to look forward to. Make sure you definitely tune in to those programs and events. Glory. We have come to the end of today's service. Wow, it's been beautiful. Let's just thank the Lord and close with this, with this prayer from the heart to the Lord. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As we go about our day, Lord, all night, wherever they are watching from, in the name of Jesus, we walk in the light continually in fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. Mante ki frali grushta palegreste figra lunda. Oh, hallelujah. And we wrap up. Let's share the grace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And surely God's goodness, mercies, favor follows us for all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Cheer up because the word is boss and the word works. Yay! See you next service. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Much, much love. Bye-bye. Just picking up days, he's got one too many quarters in